And on every swing, we were we were kind of going back a little bit. So we weren't full on dragging crazy, but it was enough where we were moving. So we had two options. It was lift anchor and move, yeah. or lift anchor and go back to the anchorage we were at last night. So we had to make yeah. a decision and we had to make it fast. While he was making the decision, I took the dinghy out in horrible weather and picked up our three crab chops because I was not going to leave the gear here. John, she was wearing a life jacket. I had a life jacket on. <laughs> Get ready for a story of bravery, determination, and a touch of crazy. Welcome to the sequel of the great Siberian sushi run, made famous by three Nordhavens in 2009. Our three-step plan is to follow in their footsteps, but this time in a 1969 aluminum trawler. Step one was to get an affordable boat, which meant a fixer-upper. Tangaro was built in 1969, and when we got her, she was in rough shape, which meant she needed a massive refit before our attempt to sail her to Japan. Step two is underway, fixing her up, and step three starts the summer of 2025. Our journey from Victoria to Alaska to Siberia and Japan will be off the beaten track. There will be bad weather, tricky waters, and things we can't predict, and we're sharing it all on camera. The good, the bad, and the downright ugly. Subscribe, as it's going to be a wild ride. Build I have a map. Where we are going, all the way up here, go island. Isn't it crazy? It looks like it's sunset, but it's seriously only like. 12.30. Okay, so we're going into West Sound and we want to go to Skull Island, which is over there. We're going to go anchor up there. Here's the West Sound Marina over here that we're going past. And we definitely have to go for a visit, but look at all the logs and debris and then crab traps. Huh. It's like a minefield out here. Blaine's going to drive through a minefield. Logs everywhere! See the logs you have to avoid? They probably all came off the beach. But that big wind the last couple days, all those logs probably came off the beach and they're going to be floating all around, which means we're definitely going to have to uh, keep our eye out when we're going back to Victoria for sure. Massacre Bay, right? And what used to happen is the First Nations would come down from the north and they would attack the Lumi Indians, which are here on Skull Island. And that's what we're going to here. So there actually is a very bloody history in this bay because this is where the majority of the attacks um, would take place. And yeah, it's just something to think about of how many people roamed this land prior to. Um, our British invasion, I guess you would call it. So, yeah, it's kind of a neat place to go explore. We're going to go explore Skull Island. Um, and again, we're in West End, West Sound on Orcas Island. By the way, I got some gummy worms for Christmas. And I absolutely love mushrooms. I think they're my favorite candy in the entire world.
at Skull Island. It doesn't even look like it's an island right there. dog we got full pro we're kayaking paddling with a dog is always a challenge Here's the white shell beach. Woohoo! Going over rocks. Yeah, that's a cool little tree right there. Going in. Uh oh, shallow. Oh, big rock. Hold on, Maggie. We gotta dodge that rock. Maggie, what are you doing? Maggie, just wait. About to lose the dog. She's going exploring. We're contemplating we keep paddling around the island and just let our dog find us. What do you think? Where she can go. She might panic. What do you guys think? Is that mean to Maggie if we just kept paddling and left her on the island? I mean, we're not going to leave her per se. We're going to be paddling around the island. Okay, let's keep going. Blaine, you can paddle with her.
you're not coming with me. Oh yeah, look at that. full-time homes. Lots of people live on Orcas, lots of artists and famous people have houses here. We've decided we've had enough kayak exercise. We seriously, I don't think, I think I've ever seen Blaine kayak once. So we're heading back to the boat to find some beer and some local cider, which I got yesterday at the store and maybe some potato chips. <laughs> we went kayaking at the right time. December 29th. 29th and we are sitting on the bow we have yet to turn really the heater on in the last two days and I'm not the slightest bit cold right now it is actually warm we're getting like warm gusts of wind it's the weirdest thing we're in just hoodies mm -hmm. pretty awesome is this global warming this time last year. Yeah, we're frozen in and snowed in places. No, we were up here. Well, we were. But... This time last year, we were at Lopez Island. But it was not this warm. No. This is very, very odd. Unseasonably warm. It's absolutely beautiful. Went for a lovely kayak. We're going to go explore Skull Island by foot. Maggie's already explored it. And then I think tomorrow morning, we're going to hike Turtle Mountain. That's the plan. Going to go explore Skull Island. Okay, we're heading to Skull Island. The beautiful white sandy beach on Skull Island. Okay, maybe high tide or there may not be any skull, any sand. White shell beach. I see it. 
That's what I was thinking. That's a cool tree. Here on Skull Island, let's tell you the history. So the Lummi Indians used to fish off this island, off this one, Skull Island, and Victim Island down there. Well, in the late 1800s, the First Nations came down from southwest Alaska, and there was a bloody massacre here. They totally, and this is the island where they found the skulls of the Lummi Indians, hence Skull Island. Oh, look, it's a puff ball. My, uh... It's a puff ball. There's got to be animals on here because the moss is all ripped up. Raccoons. All the crab stuff under here. Mushrooms. Oh, that would be a good jumping cliff. Yeah. What do you think, B? It's lovely over here. Skull Island. This is a nice, nice place to anchor for tonight. Hopefully, anyway. Look how much that tree's blown over from the wind. This, this far. <laughs> There's a pup that was coming right ne next to the boat. Another geodetic stamp right here. Oh, really? Yeah. So that is the thing that they stick the, the GPS thing stick on. They say, look, the island hasn't moved, right? All right. I'm assuming. Maybe. Yeah, because it's got the little hole in the middle. I think. Survey they, U.S. Coast Guard the oh, geodetic just, survey. Hi, Russell. And as long as they hold straight up and down. Okay, people, give me a break. Give me a second, and I'll go figure out what the U.S. Coast Guard geodetic survey is. Kind of cool though. This one's 1950. 1950. It's not really that long ago. It's another one of those geodetic stamp seals here. It was one of those little green ones. Mm -hmm. It's like, they're, they're weird, like the, they're, they're neat. It's like it's the another one, U.S. Coast Guard Geodetic Survey. For information, write to the director of... write to anything anymore? <laughs> his, a his address is here. I must have been super big on wearing six knots, but I've been doing a lot of that in the last few days. Brings back such memories of being in Northern Ontario and finding puffballs to play with. Oh, I got a good one here. Let's see if I can lift this one up. Ready? Whoa! <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to Google what they are. <laughs> He's not going this way. It's like perfect parking for two. <laughs> two and two only. <laughs> Russell, come on. Oh, don't get your shoes wet. Good girl, Maggie. I think I'm stuck. Oh, 
water is pretty nice right now. Okay. Graceful. Okay. Okay, everybody, we're out looking for our crab traps. There's a lot of stuff in the water out here. Well, you gotta look at the winds that came through the last couple days. Definitely had enough rope. Definitely had enough rope. Oh, there it is. So this is our big see trap. How far down you can see? Yeah, I know, is that cool? It's crazy how clear the water is. I love it. Winter cruising, baby. Pulling up crab traps in the middle of the night. Actually, it's only like five o'clock. Oh, oh, he's a little baby. Too small. You need to get him out of there? Is he much of a point? I don't know. Not much of a point. It's just going to fall down basically when we drop the trap back down. Okay. It's kind of cool though. So beer can works. Works. Just not fast. Okay. Be back tomorrow night, or tomorrow morning. Oh, here it is. Oh. Nothing. Did you remove that one? There's much in there. Is there a piece of chicken in there? Yeah, there's chicken in there. And there was other bait stuff. Oh. Well, I guess we'll let it sit. Hey, wait, bring it back up again? Is that door open? Port side, one closest to the boat. Is it? Nope. Oh, no, it's good. Okay. Yeah. Better sit. Huh. The crab are just not very hungry around right here. Well, they said the crabs were very slow right now. So the crab dude that we met earlier this morning said that crabbing is very slow right now and they're not getting very many. So we'll just leave it till tomorrow morning. We've got one more to check and keep your fingers crossed that maybe we get some big dungeons. Cool. Trap number three. Trap number two is a bus. Trap number one had a wee little one in there. Ooh. Here it comes, I see it. I don't know. I'm gonna say nope. Ah, uh, bust. Put them all back in. Bust times three. Well, we did have one in the, in the beer can. Good little one. Okay, we will check him tomorrow morning. Fingers crossed, people. Come on, you guys. You guys, come on, pray, pray. Fingers crossed that we get prawns. Prawns? We're not catching prawns. Fingers Bye. crossed that Bye. we catch. <laughs> okay, all you guys out there who are watching, fingers crossed that we get crab tomorrow morning because we need a crab feast for New Year's Eve. We had a long night. Early night, long night, Blaine is texting our buddy boat to say I already have the crab chops up. So what happened? Yeah. Um, so last night the wind picked up. It was only supposed to pick up about 10 knots or so, 15 maybe. Um, it was, we were getting pretty heavy gusts in here though. And so the, what, 30? No, I wouldn't say 30, but you know, hard, honestly it's hard to tell. Um, I was, was out there in the dinghy, it felt like 30. It was enough where the straps on the, the stuff upstairs were singing pretty good. Um, so I woke up and I, well I wasn't quite asleep yet, but I went up in the pilot house and I was just kind of watching the, the time zero. And on every swing we were, we were kind of going back a little bit. Boop, boop, so boop, 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 boop. We weren't full on dragging crazy, but it was enough where we were moving. And, we had 200 um, feet of chain out. We had 200 feet of chain out and 38 feet of water, 36 feet of water, so pretty good, pretty good ratio. Good dreadlock. And uh, there was a rock behind us as well in the anchorage, and I just, we could have let more chain out in hopes of having it, you know, be a little bit better, but I just didn't feel comfortable with that rock behind us there. So we had two options. It was lift anchor and move, yeah. or lift anchor and go back to the anchorage we were out last night. So we had to make yeah. a decision and we had to make it fast. While he was making the decision, I took the dinghy out in horrible weather 
and picked up our three crab chops because I was not going to leave the gear here. Yeah. John, she was wearing a life jacket. I had a life jacket on. <laughs> okay, so we made the decision to? Uh, we made the decision to just move. Uh, we figured on this side of the bay, we might be a little bit better protected, so we just kind of shifted over to the other side. And we were. And we were, yep. yep. Um, but that being said, the weather seemed to start improving right after we moved anyway. So the wind was starting to die down, the waves were better. Um, and now we have 400 feet of chain out. And now, 400, 300. 300, 300 feet of chain, chain out, which uh, means I have to start lifting yes. right now because it's going to take me half an hour it's to pull it all It's going to take half up. an hour, yeah. We've got a very slow windless. It's good, but it's slow. Um, so anyway, yeah, it was a fun night. We didn't get to bed until about 1 a.m. or so. I kind of like those nights, though, where you have to like, woohoo, here we go. That's one of us. I know. I don't like those Anyways, breaks. guys, yes, we lifted the anchor. We did not grab the camera. Sorry. It was all hands on deck to get this boat moved. There's only two of us on board. And, of course, Maggie wants to jump in wherever she can. But yes. I did not grab a camera. Plus, it was pitch black, and I was just using a headlamp. And yeah. Hence, but we'll tell you the story this morning. And this a, is why we look so tired. Not a major crisis. These are the things that you kind of have to be prepared for. Um, it's just... It wasn't a great sleep night for us. The holding wasn't as good as what I hoped it would be. And yeah, just have but a little I just too wanted much wind. To, well, we wanted to tell you a story because boating isn't all roses. You don't no. just set the anchor and just go to sleep, lovely, rocking to the waves. No. no. You especially, have to monitor stuff. Especially winter to... boating in yes. the Canada. No, we're in the United States. Yes, we are. Okay, guys, let's go find a new place to go.